Check it out, new eraser, Stag Money. This is the new one. Uh, today I want to talk about a few more examples of the uh, local minimum, local maximum business. These are going to be more complicated functions. Um, let's just get to it. I hope you remember the method. Um, it'll come back to you pretty quick, I think. First example. In every problem here, I want you to find the x values for the local minimum and the local maximum values of this function. x squared times e to the x minus 3. Okay, so what, was the, uh, what were the steps for finding these? Remember, first you find the critical numbers. These are points where the derivative equals 0 or the derivative does not exist. Then you make that chart of the uh, signs of the derivative. And then based on the chart, you can figure out what the... Um, what the uh, relative extreme points are. So let's do it. First of all, we take the derivative and simplify as much as possible. What are you going to do here? All right, I got this guy and then the minus 3. Since this is two things added together, the minus 3 is going to become 0 when you take the derivative. Really, all we have to care about is this, the derivative of x squared times e to the x. And for that, you use the product rule because it's two functions multiplied together. So I go the first function times the derivative of the second, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then plus the second function, e to the x, times the derivative of the first function is 2x. There you go. Um, this is the derivative. Let's simplify as much as we can. Um, remember, what happened to the minus 3? It goes away because it was a constant which was added onto that, and so it disappears. Okay, let's simplify as much as we can. Um, first of all, both of these things have e to the x on it, so we can factor out e to the x x squared plus 2x is what's left over, right? That's what happens when you pull this guy out. What remains is x squared and a 2x. And then actually you can factor a little bit more here. You can factor x out. So it's e to the x times x times x plus 2. All right. This is the derivative. What do we do next? We find the critical numbers. This would be points where the derivative is 0 or where the derivative does not exist. All right, this is f prime of x. Okay, it's easy to say where the derivative does not exist. Remember to figure out where the derivative does not exist. You um, you just have to look for points um, which make zero in the denominator or neg uh, zeros inside of a log or something like that. There's no such nonsense going on here. E to the x, you can plug whatever x you want in here. Any values of x will work here. So I'm just going to say f prime does not exist never. All right. We do not need to worry about points where the derivative does not exist. Where is the derivative equal to zero? That can happen, so let's check that out. Okay, we are finding points when the derivative equals zero. So that means e to the x times x times x plus 2 equal zero. And when you have things multiplied together to be zero, that means you set each of them equal to zero. So that means e to the x equals zero or x equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. All right, this is just a number, right? x equals 0. That must be a critical number. This one over here, you can solve for x. x equals negative 2. All right, that's another critical number. What about this part, e to the x equals 0? Can you solve for x here? Uh, the answer is no. Actually, this has no solutions. you got to remember that fact about uh, exponential functions. e to the x is never 0 and is always positive. All right, so e to the x equals 0 is not possible. That means there are no solutions from this little bit. We do get solutions over here and over here. So x equals 0 and x equals minus 2 are the critical numbers. All right. We make our little chart. I can make it down here, can I? Uh, 0 and minus 2. I better put minus 2. You should really put the numbers in order, right? Minus 2 comes before 0. And then what about f prime? So the derivative is 0 here and 0 here. I want to know in between here. What is the derivative, positive or negative? To do that, you plug numbers in. Plug in some numbers to the derivative, which is right here. Let's start over in this region. A number less than negative 2, let's say negative 3. What is f prime of negative 3? You go up here, you plug in negative 3. e to the minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3 plus 2. Um, as usual, it doesn't really matter what this is, although you could put this in your calculator if you want. To figure out what the number is but it doesn't matter what matters is is it positive or negative e to the minus 3 what is that positive or negative remember what I just said 
e to the x is always positive, never zero. So e to the minus three is positive, all right? Uh, I don't know if that sounds weird to you. Even though the exponent is negative, the thing is still positive? Uh, yes, it is. Remember what e to the minus three means? It means one over e to the three, right? e to the three is positive, so one over e to the three is also positive. Anyway, this is positive, all right? Because e to any power is always positive. This is negative, of course, and then this right here is also negative. That's a negative one. So I got a positive times a negative times a negative. That is a positive, all right? So right here, the derivative is positive. Okay, let's choose a point here. Say negative one, f prime of minus one is e to the minus one, all still positive, times minus one, which is negative, times minus one plus two. This is now positive, all right? So I got positive times a negative times a positive, which is a negative. So this is negative. And then over here, let's choose, say, one, x equal one. I can do this over here. Uh, f prime of 1 will be e to the 1 times 1 times 1 plus 2. All of these being positive, the answer is positive. So over here I get a positive. All right. And now for the extrema, you just look at these. Each one of these um, is possibly going to be a relative minimum or a maximum. Which is it? Depends on how the sign goes. And here the sign is going positive to negative. That means the function is going up and then going down, which means x equal minus 2. Whoa. X equal minus 2 is a local relative. Sorry. Sometimes I say local. I know our textbook says relative. So relative maximum, right? Up plus and then minus means it goes up, then it goes down. Okay, and here goes down, then it goes back up. That means this point is a minimum. X equals 0 is a relative minimum. All right, that's that. Next example, here it is. Find the relative extrema for this function, f of x equals 6x to the 2 thirds minus 4x. All right, I guess that x to the 2 thirds is a little weird, but forget about it. Let's just do it anyway. All right, do the same thing we always do. First step, take the derivative and simplify as much as you can. Okay, derivative is uh, pretty easy here. You multiply, this is just a power of x, right? So multiply this guy, 6 times 2 thirds, x to the, what is 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third minus 4 here, right? 4x becomes 4 when you take the derivative. Um, let's simplify as much as possible, which is not very much, but you can do this, right? 6 times 2 thirds, you go, that's 4, right? 4, x to the minus 1 third minus 4, all right? This is the derivative. Let's uh, figure out the critical numbers. These are the points where the derivative equals zero or where the derivative does not exist. Now, this here, as you, usually what I say at this point is, does not exist, you, you gotta check when is the denominator equal to zero and there's no denominator here, so we don't care about that. Actually, uh, it's not so simple in this case. As written this way, it looks like there's no denominator, but I have a negative power here, so this actually is the same as this. Isn't that right? That's what the negative power means, okay? So actually, there is a denominator in this uh, f prime. So we do really need to discuss when does the derivative not exist. It's when the denominator here equals zero, and that happens when x equals zero, okay? So in this case, x equals zero is a critical number, all right? There's also gonna be some more critical numbers which happen when the derivative is zero, so let's do that too. We are going to set this equal to zero and figure out what x values cause this to equal zero. All right, solve for x. You got to do a few things here, which we don't uh, typically do just because the x is in the denominator. I think the easiest way to do this is first multiply the four, uh, add the four to this side. Four over x to the one third equals four. Um, if you like, you can just divide both sides by four and kill the fours entirely. One over x to the one third equals one. Now multiply this to the far side. It says one equals x to the one third. And now you solve for x by cubing on both sides. And this becomes x and this becomes one cubed, which equals one. So x equal one is the other critical number. We have two critical numbers. x equals zero happened when the derivative did not exist and x equal one is a point where the derivative equals zero. All right, let's make our chart. 
here's the chart. These are the two critical numbers, zero and one. What about the derivative? Well, at uh, x equals zero, the derivative does not exist. So I'm going to put a little DNE down here. And at x equals one, the derivative equals zero. In any case, we got two plug in points over here, here, and here, and see what the sign of the derivative is. Okay, let's start with, say, negative one. All right. Uh, so f prime of minus one. This will be four over minus one to the one third minus four. Okay. Now, usually we do this sort of pluses and minuses and they're all multiplied together. You can't actually do this here because this whole thing, it's not a bunch of stuff multiplied together. Um, you know, you have to actually know, is this thing minus four going to be positive or negative? So you actually have to figure out what that number right there is. It's not so hard though. What is minus one to the one third? Remember the one third power means the cube root. So this is the same as four over cube root of minus one minus four and what is cube root of minus one that is minus one that's because minus one cubed is equal to minus one so this is actually four over minus one minus four and what is that this is negative four minus four right negative four minus four which is minus eight there you go so this is negative the answer is negative okay let's try a point right here between 0 and 1, I want to choose a point, my favorite point between 0 and 1, which is convenient to plug into this function. What are you going to choose? How about 1 8? Is that what you thought I was going to say? 1 8. 1 8. You hear me? Let's try 1 8. What do you get here? 4 over. Uh, 1 8 to the 1 3rd, that would be the cube root of 1 8 minus 4. Why did I choose 1 8? It's because actually 1 8 is something which is easy to take a cube root of. This is not too hard. Remember, uh, the way that roots work, if you have a root of a uh, fraction, you can split that into the, the uh, roots on the numerator and on the denominator. So this is actually cube root of 1 divided by cube root of 8. And then over here, minus 4. What's the cube root of 1? It's 1. What's the cube root of 8? It's 2. This is why I chose 1 8 rather than 1 half, because I don't actually know what the cube root of uh, 2 is, but I do know what the cube root of 8 is. Uh, the answer is 2. So what we end up with is 4 over 1 half minus 4. All right. What's 4 over 1 half? You do your old simplifying of the fraction on fraction. It ends up being 8. How many uh, one-halves are in 4? The answer is uh, 8. 8 minus 4, which is 4, which is positive, which is all we really care about. Positive right there. All right. See, this one's a little harder to tell the signs here. You might be tempted to reach for your calculator right at this point. You can actually just plug that into your calculator. But um, I'm going to make you do this by hand when the time is right. Okay. One more point. Let's choose a point over here, which I'm going to plug in. Um, what's your favorite point greater than 1 to plug into this, this derivative over here? All right, I'm back. What point do you want to choose over here? I want to choose a point greater than 1. Let's plug in 8. Why 8? Usually I would choose 2 here, but I'm going to choose 8 again because it's easy to do the cube root of 8. It's going to be 4 over cube root of 8 minus 4. And what's that? Cube root of 8 is 2. So this is 4 over 2 minus 4. That would be 2 minus 4, which would be negative 2, which is negative right there. Negative. All right. I think we're ready to give our answer here about relative uh, extreme values, right? Is it a minimum or a maximum? Zero. The derivative does not exist here. The function actually, the original function does exist when uh, x equals zero, right? Remember the, the original function was something like, no, six, right? Six x to the two thirds minus four x, right? So you can plug in zero here, you get something. So that's zero. It's not like the whole function doesn't exist there, but uh, only the derivative does not exist. Anyway, what do you want to say? x equals zero is a relative Minimum or maximum, this says goes down and then up, so that guy is at the bottom. The answer is minimum. And then x equal 1 is a relative maximum. 
that's that. By the way, uh, you've probably noticed this already, but you can check these answers. You can check yourself before you wreck yourself pretty easily here by just uh, graphing this original function. And you just look at the graph and uh, see if this is actually true. When you graph this function, it looks a little weird. Here's what you get. Uh, you can see right over there at x equals zero, that's a relative minimum. It's a little uh, pointy, but that point is uh, the, the y value is the minimum of all the nearby y values. And x equal 1 over there is a relative maximum. So it's nice to uh, check your answer if you can.